Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 417. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review the uh, uh, questions and the answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, he uh, is a recent winner of uh, the best local search agency uh, for Middle Earth. And um, he's a Google product expert on the Google My Business community. Masataki Wasa is a um, Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. Masataki is uh, based in Wimbledon uh, in London. And um, uh, you can find Masataki at um, wasaweb.net, wasaweb.net. Tim Kappa at onlineownership.com. Okay, our first question tonight is uh, uh, it's titled Should We uh, No Follow Every Outgoing Link on Our Website? Uh, um, whether these are footers, social media links, or certificates, or partnering website links. Um. So, yeah, we, I mean, we had a backwards and forwards here with, with Nathan. The thing is, so from from my point of well, so for me, uh, the answer is no. Um, because essentially, if you're not following something, you um, are saying to a search engine, I don't trust that site, it's a bad neighborhood. Um, and if all your outbound links are like saying, I don't trust these sites, they're bad neighborhoods, that then becomes an issue for Google, right? Because why would you be doing that? Why would you be no following these when you don't want the user to, you know, essentially you shouldn't be clicking on them because, well, they, because they're just, uh, it's a bad, I don't trust them, that's a bad neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> then Nathan went on to say, oh no, it's about basically page juice. and. Uh, absolutely hate that term. Um, uh, I think Nathan's probably been reading something about page rank sculpting or something like this. But you can do that internally with your internal content rather than, you know, doing that with external links, which you are then at the end of the day saying to Google, you know, like, I don't trust these sites, you know. Um, so you shouldn't have them on you know like yeah so yeah i just i just think it's 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 a pretty bad it's it's a, it's a pretty bad uh thing to do to your site um and uh you know if you have them on your site you, you know you should be confident enough for, for for um a search engine to follow them without telling them it's a bad neighborhood or you don't trust it um so yeah, it's it's just it's just bad. It's just you know it's a bad practice. Um, sometimes I know some plugins. If you're using like social media widgets, some plugins no follow them. I, I, I guess by now um, Google has probably seen you know realized and, and and understands that there's some of these plugins that do it automatically and therefore they'd like um, yeah whatever um <clears throat> but if it's other if it's other you know um things that you have like i don't know a shop page or a you know there's there's tons of other reasons you could have external links on the site um and if all of a sudden you're saying you don't trust them and especially you know the worst part is especially if you're connecting to a supplier a brand uh, that you work closely with and then you're saying i don't trust them and they're actually integrally involved with the business it's just it's just it's just not good excellent tim 
Okay, let's move on to number two on our run list. I have nine questions tonight. Uh, number two is uh, titled, Is it okay to put rel no follow to links um, on other language versions of a page? He, he goes, Nick D Die Nice uh, uh, goes on to, to ask if I'm using rel alternative href lang um, the right way. Is it okay to put rel no follow to links to other language versions of a page? Mm. I don't know why you would want to do it. Um, you know, the only the only reason you would probably put no follow onto these is going back to probably Nick's read something about page rank sculpting and not wanting the actual any particular flow from one from from the main english to the to the translated version the the, the thing that you know <laughs> the thing is yeah is if you're creating a language version of that page and you've href langed it that's great stuff but the whole purpose of that translated language page is to rank for that page in that country in that language so why are you saying from the english version actually you know hey i don't trust this because that's what a rel no follow typically is um sorry um and then and then um it's like you you want a search engine to follow it because it's part of your site. You want it to understand that this is the translated version of the English page, and you want that language page to actually rank in that country. So why do you want to restrict any flow, internal flow of the understanding? Yeah, just no, don't do it. Yeah, it sounds a bit more complicated because if you scroll down, Jim, um, Nick explains sort of why he wants to do this and is a shopping site um, uh, multiple countries and multiple languages. So large number of combinations. Um, but I agree with um, Michael Martinez in that yeah, it's something that you do with canonical and HF line. Thanks for the heads up, uh, Mr. Taki. I almost missed putting that in. Um, yeah. yeah, it's still going down or up. Um, let's see. Um, Yeah. And it's further down, as it were. Oh, even further down, okay. Yeah, that's where Nick where well, that's where Nick explains sort of the, the reasoning why he wants to do this. Um Should you have asked this without thank, thank, thanking people like Michael Martin uh, who answer questions throughout the week. And the one thing that struck me and sort of slightly worried me is that when Nick states that um, <clears throat> all pages are accessible with any language and region combination in the URL, nearly 240. And we placed almost all of these combinations in the URL alternate HF lang, which was a mistake. And I'm not so sure where that mistake happened, you know, or where it happened, rather. Yeah. We've so, run out of scroll space, uh, Mesa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, there's a good 240 for any given. I still don't see how a translated page would be a duplicate in any way, shape, or form of a no. the, an, another language page. No, I think uh, sort of 
uh, reading between, between the lines, I think that the sum of the um, product pages are essentially the same, but they have to have, each country has to have its own page. Um, so it may be the case that there are duplicate pages, essentially all the same except for the um, region language combination. But, but even it's still, it still would it still wouldn't be duplicate because the language is completely exactly. different. And um, I, I don't get it. And then also, some languages won't have keyboard, so I guarantee you, some of them, some of those will default to uh, a one, two, three URL. I mean, there's no way you could have like a Chinese. Do you see what I mean? If it's yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I think I think that if Nick has many, many pages, which is specifically geared to a particular country, even though you know, he might have, let's say, 40 pages in English, um, each targeting a different country, so long as there, there's proper hreflang, that shouldn't be a problem with the language locale combination. Def definitely not. I mean, if you look at American, American, American Express, for example, holy guacamole, like they literally cover every freaking language worldwide, global. Yeah, so, so that's why, so that's what sort of struck me about Nick's comment, the sort of last comment that he made, mm -hmm. that, you know, he stated that it was a mistake. And I don't think it should be. And I don't think it would be. I would stick with hreflang. And forget about sort of well no follow and um, worrying about duplicate um, translated pages. Yeah, and depends. Like, and I, I know it's, uh, it's, we were scrolling through there on the canonicals. Like, if this is properly set up, you know, like if there's a combination search and which create pops up a search query in that language this your cms or whatever you, you site you're using should actually properly be um canonicalizing that language's search query back to the originating search query in that language i mean it should be working like your english version you, that that's what you need to look at it should you, just, you know what i mean your 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 language pages should be working exactly the same way as your as your you know your English your main your main site's language page. It, so, if there's a search query done in that language page and it's creating a it's creating parameter queries on URLs, those parameter queries should then be canonicalizing back to that correct languages canonical. You know, it should all work the same way. The only difference here is your hreflang guide to search engine to this is english this is french this is spanish and then of course this is spanish in mexico or this is um spain spanish this is spanish in this you, you see what i mean um so so yeah you know like i just i wouldn't use no follow i would make sure that i'm my HF lengths are correct, and that my language side um, internals is working correctly with proper canonicalization of parameter queries, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, will we call this a wrap on this one for Nick? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, it's a real pleasure to be part of the the conversation on this. Uh, all, all these great minds like Michael Martin is, uh, Tim Kappa, Basataki Wasa. Ah, yes, it's uh, it's really good. Okay, Nathan Bradshaw. Uh, do I have to add FAQs with schema code? Uh, he said, "Hello all. I need your help in implementing FAQ schema on my page." I've added the answer and questions. Do I have to add again FAQs with schema code uh, in the footer or header? 
So your FAQs is on the page. It's on text on the page. You need to mark that those FAQs up on the page with schema. No, it doesn't duplicate it because it's in schema, right? So although, and also equally, you don't always have to put the entire answer into the answer in the schema. Um, you can put the, the, like, you know, some answers can be four, five, or six paragraphs. You can put the originating and then put a link more, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, things like that. So, but essentially, no, you're not duplicating because one is, one is in, let's say, play, in plain HTML on page, and then your schema is wrapped into schema of those questions and answers. And I, and, I, and I put, you know, an example of, you know, the beginning of some schema FAQ. Um, so, no, it doesn't duplicate, but it does need to go on page if you're going to put it in. Excellent, Tim. All right, let's wrap this one. We're charging through these. We're up to number four on our run list. Uh, from David Corwood, it's titled... Is there something obvious uh, I am missing? Something I say to myself almost every day. Um, and he said, hi, all. I'm really struggling with SEO on my website. He said, I've been looking at the Google Search Console and I'm ranking between 60 and 80 for some queries that I have multiple pages optimised for. Um, I have green faces for SEO and readability in Yoast. On the other hand, I'm ranking really well for queries that I do not mention on my website and have no interest in ranking for. Um, I know that there is no magic solution or quick fix, and I understand the importance of domain authority and backlinks, etc. However, even in a competitive niche, I would have thought that my basic optimization would have gained slightly better results. Is there something often, uh, uh, sorry, something obvious I am missing? Thanks in advance. Uh, I think we did this one last week, but uh, to to recap, um, so firstly, your search console is is without you segmenting it is pulling in worldwide. That's why you get in like sixty and eighties and all these things. Um, so firstly, segmented by the actual country you want to see it in, because if it's pulling in all the information, it's it's giving you an average of where. So you might be page one in your country or page two, but you might be page 80 in Honduras. Um, next off, um, you are going to have random queries that will be on page 247, right, for... Um, for, for for some queries because your site has text um, your uh, your site has text on it Google looks at the text files it away and for a particular search query that contains one snippet or a sentence on your site on a particular page right um, it it's going to include that and you, although you're not trying to rank for it you will the Google Search Console will be showing, you know, for this particular thing, you actually appear on page 200 and whatever. So ignore that. Like, if that's not important to you, just ignore it. But on the flip side, it's also great for you to go through and go, ah, okay, so, and, and I'm saying, once you've, once you've segmented by your country so that you're getting better, truer, truer results, you can look at this and go, Oh, okay, so I'm on page four for, and did I see correctly? What did David say he was doing a printed T-shirts or something? Anyway, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's say, let's say, um, green silk printed T-shirts, right? And you've got a product on green silk sort of printed t-shirts but now you, you 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 haven't particularly optimized it or for anything and you and you see a, a query down there for green silk sort of printed t-shirts now it's like okay so let's split that up like how can i can, how can i look at um looking at uh 
enhancing that. Well, um, do I have any content on silk printed t-shirts and do I have any user information on, 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 on how it's worked and da, da, da. And then how can I leverage my whole silk printed t-shirts and interlink better to the different color schemes that I have, um, you know, and, 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 and work on it. So th those things in search call actually is actually very, very, very valuable. I mean, I literally once a week, I'm looking at new updates and new finds in search console, which is weekly, right? Um, on how Google sees your site. And then you look at that and go, ah, okay, here's a new opportunity now because something that wasn't fully appearing or it may be some new piece of content that you've put on your site now creates a different understanding of different things to Google and you're seeing that opportunity within Search Console. And you're going, right, okay, so that's got some fairly decent impressions, except I'm on page nine. How can I look at content around this particular subject or those particular queries and how can I and how can I get that onto site and incorporate that into site to make my relevance for those queries more important so don't be looking at it like oh, I don't want to and the stuff that we and the stuff like um, and and the stuff that the queries that are appearing in search console that like literally have no bearing to the site and you will every single site will get them because every single site has words in them right and you will have a combination and google's just saying to you by the way you appeared on the 90th page for uh, pick your nose t-shirt and that's because you've got a product somewhere uh and in the alt image you've got a kid like in the alt image text you've got a a little kid on the t-shirt like i don't know some cool kid picking his nose and although you're not trying to like create a product pick your nose t-shirt you will always have these incidentals every single site does and the bigger your site gets and the more products you have and the more content you have these will grow but you don't look at them and go hey I, like i don't like it well it's there because we have words we have images we have everything on our site I bet, bet you if you scroll down to, like, if you went deep enough into the three, four hundredth page, you would have, like, a, a contact pick your nose. Like, do you see what I mean? It's like you are going to have all these incidentals, and you just ignore those. But you look at the ones where you can leverage and understand and, and work around and, and create you know, a whole funnel and a whole bit of content around that particular thing to dominate all those particular queries. Because those are people are finding you. You mustn't rely on the end result, like printed T-shirt. I just want to rank for printed T-shirts. Well, if you just want to rank for printed T-shirts, then you have lost 99% of customers because 99% of customers will do a search query and research and prices and costs and sizing and the different quality of the print, different types of screen printing, um, different weaves of the T-shirt, thickness for better, whatever. And and those are all the customers you're losing out on. You're just getting that one guy who, who eventually just, you know, eventually done all his research and printed screen, screen printed T-shirts. And even then, even if you're position one, you are only looking at 33% of whatever the average uh, search on that is. So if it, you know, if, if it was 100 queries a month, you're literally only looking at 33%, even if you're position one. So if you just concentrate on that final thing, you're like shooting yourself in the foot. You need to look at those queries and you need to look at all those longer tail queries and all those thematic and topical queries around it. and and um, create content that will intersect in the user's purchasing journey. Thank you, Tim. That's excellent. All right, uh, let's move on to number uh, um, number five on our run list. Is it Masataki? Yeah. Um, Mark Vinner asked the question. It, it's titled "Figuring Out." how to do SEO content silos for my niche. Uh, Mark said, hi, everybody. I'm struggling to figure out how to do SEO content silos for my niche. My issue is that 
every source seems to say that it's bad to interlink, interlink silos. And I've no idea how to do it without interlinking my uh, silos. Are there uh, any exceptions to the rule of never interlink silos? Uh, example, in the below picture, if my niche was clothes, which it isn't, and silo one was shoes, silo two was shirts, and silo three pants, how or why would it be considered bad or irrelevant to link the three together if a pair of shoes looks good um, with a shirt and a pair of pants? Goodness. Um, so I don't know where, well, who said to you that you shouldn't say that it's bad to interlink. Like, like as Michael says there, like th those are people's opinions. But just like you just said to yourself, Mark, the user wants to see a pair of shorts or shirts with a pair of shoes and a, and a, and a trousers. So when the, when the users clicked on that product for a pair of shoes, you can, you know, depending on, on like how your site's laid out, you can do a, you can, depending on how it's laid out, you know, you can do a selection of other users also liked, two more sets of shoes, but then you can also do uh, these also work with these shoes and it's, you know, green shoes and a, a green dress. And like, if, <laughs> if you just look at Amazon, <laughs> and how many bazillions they made last year, right? And you look at when you click on a product, the massive amount of, yeah, these are the other products, but other users also liked and other users also bought. I mean, they are the king of interlinking, right? So, if I, so this is my thought. If I read a, an article going, Oh, you shouldn't interlink your silos because you know you're going to lose a bit of page juice between this man and la la la. And I read like, well, who the hell are you? And how much? How many? How how, how many millions did you turn over last year? Uh, I didn't. Oh, and I look at Amazon. How many billions did you turn over last year? Oh, fourteen. Mm, who am I going to go with? Like, just just. You know what I mean? I would, I would, yeah. Yeah, that's, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just comes down to what makes sense for your visitors and what makes sense for your business. And it, it is, I think, I think if you get, into that tunnel vision of thinking this is how it has to be done because it's a website uh, instead of thinking how do i get to the customers how do i reach them and how do i you know convert the traffic that i receive into sales it is about priorities and i think getting bogged down with this sort of ideal website structure, I think, is one way of um, losing concentration. If... Thank you, Mr. Dougie. Okay, let's roll along to number six of our run list from Emma Schwartz, um, who is looking for some advice regarding domains. Um, she said, I own the .net and the .uk of my name, but not the .com. What would be the main downside to using a .net instead of a .com? Um, would it be best to add an extra word to the domain and get a .com? Or would it be best um, to use the exact brand name, my name, with the .net? Let me put a vote in for add a, add a word um, and get the dot com. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Look, um, I mean, I would, I would try and go from my own country, um, uh, TLD, as Richard said. Um, there are also some unique ones, depending on the country you're in. Um, and depending on the the, 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 the the genre you're in, um, there are also kind of some unique ones which could also work quite nicely. Um, <clears throat> but if all else fails, .NETs work pretty well. I mean, I had a, a .NET in my very, 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 very first site, a .NET, um which was eventually bought by monster are they still around are monster jobs still around um who actually had the dot com version yeah they're still around monster jobs yeah still around um so look you know you can do you can you can do wonderful things with it uh the problem is is from a brand perspective if those two brands are operating in the same country, that's when you're going to have problems. Like, I don't know, you know, and ideally you wouldn't have two brands operating in the same country because that means neither one of you have actually trademarked your your your, your brand, um, which leaves space for more brands to use that same name. Um, so that that that's another issue you probably want to look at. Um, so yeah, look, that is the problem you're going to run into is when somebody searches that brand name, but they don't know if it's a .com or .net, uh, and you're going to get two different things competing in the search results for that. One's .com, one's .net, one clicks on the .com. And if it's mm -hmm. a similar kind of product, like, I mean, some can be completely different. So like one could be cookery books and then one could be chairs so they know they've clicked the wrong one and then they'll go back and find you but if it's doing the same base product like richard said you're going to have a problem then yeah i mean in this instance it's her name isn't it that, that, i don't, I that she wants don't, to be. don't know I didn't scroll down well, so, so would it be best to use the exact brand name brackets my name with the dot net so i'm assuming that Emma wants to have her name as the domain name and then with you know, .net or .co.uk the end. Um, it depends what she does. And, uh, but I personally would, would use the .net and .co.uk because it keep, because it's her name and it keeps things simple and the dot com is not being used at the moment of course there is always a risk that that might change and someone else with exactly the same name might buy that and use it for their business um but personally i think because if she, if emma's trading in her own name and that's how she goes by and that's how she wants to be known then I would keep to .net and .co.uk because that I think keeps things simpler and clearer for potential customers. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, let's we, we, we'll call this one a wrap for um, number six, and let's look at number seven. From Duda Jack Tin, uh, who said he wants to rank locally as well as I would like to rank nationally. He said, I have a dilemma you people could maybe help me with. So I'm setting up this new website and I want to rank locally as, as well as I would like to rank nationally. The reason for ranking nationally is because the purpose of the website um, is. Um, is spreading the business nationally and generating 
new leads from across the country. Uh, but there's also a good reason for also going locally because there is literally no competition for local, brackets, citywide searches. So my question would be, is it wise or a good idea to set two pages, one that which would try to rank for larger search queries, which has significantly more searches per month and much more competition, and another one which is trying to rank for local queries. Even more simple, is it a good idea to have two pages on the same site? <coughs> one aesthetic surgery and another one aesthetic um, uh, searches. Portland. Goodness. So, so it's a typical, yeah, it's, uh, that's a typical thing um, of creating location pages. Um, <clears throat> the only, the only thing is, is what most people do wrong is they just um, duplicate the entire thing from city to city and just change the city name in it. Um, those, you know, those Google got wise to a long, long time ago. They still work in very, very low competition areas. So like you said, there's no competition in some of these areas. So that they, they, those kind of duplicated um, uh, probably will still work. You can check it out. But um, ideally, they should be unique and local to those areas. Now. The big problem I've got here is like, I don't know if you were just saying aesthetic surgery, is, was it aesthetic or aesthetic or whatever? If it is surgery, you're gonna have another slight issue. Like, and, and, and I've got a potential issue there. Like, one, you're then going into the medical genre. Um, and the medical arena has its own set of um, ranking. And it was like, you just need to Google search the medic update, and then you will understand what that whole kind of genre around that is. So in that kind of situation, these templated doorway pages um, probably won't just work on, you know, just changing the city name. Um, I think there's something more qualitative, qualitative would be brought in there um, because especially it's medical and Google views it as your money or your life. Um, so I think if you're going to do these, firstly, they need to be spot on. The other problem you're going to have is if you are chucking up for all these locations. And I know you said lead gen, but the problem is, is you're saying, and you're ranking, trying to rank for a local search query. Um, but you're not being able to put any local specific stuff in there. You don't have a local doctor there. You don't have a local address there. You don't have a local registered surgeon in that area you are hoping that they then click through to your main number and then you're trying to figure out if you can perform that surgery or sell that thing to another surgeon, right? I'm not so sure if that's going to work with this medic thing. But if you're going to do it, you should be doing, yes, you should definitely be doing location pages. Um, I would take my time with these. I wouldn't just boilerplate them out. I would obviously do your main location first, provide, you know, some great content that will satisfy, um, especially obviously get yourself ranking locally first because you, that, that, that you're going to see is, is how the site is perceived from a medical, medic sort of authoritative angle. And then slowly go, you know, slowly start creating cities, city pages, right? I would probably split them out by state and then by cities and stuff like that. But once you've got yourself sorted locally, then you can start working. And I wouldn't just boilerplate them out mass on mass. 
I would pick one kind of state and then you can see what you're up against in terms of uh, that and how Google actually perceives it when you're not actually in that state and you're doing a working in uh, your money or your life sort of genre. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's now rock on to number eight on our run list. This one from Mike Harvey, and it's titled Keywords Combination. Mike said, I have created SEO keyword service pages, um, target keyword brackets, roofers plus city. Um, do I create other pages with the keyword roofers uh, in uh, plus city or would I rank for that also? Um, no, Mark, you don't create things for roofers, city, roofers, in city, roofers, near city, roof. No, it's one page for roofers in that city. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's just no way um, you, you would be able to create enough differentiating content for roofers city, roofers in city, roofers near city. It's just, it's, no, 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 no. And ultimately you'd end that end up starting to cannibalize each other and all sorts of other odds and sods. Um, if they're not differentiating enough, Google will be like, hey, well, I'm going to just show one. I don't know which one I'll pick. I'll pick this one. I'll show this one. Um, yeah, no, that's just, no, bad, 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 bad plan. It looks so obvious on the page, doesn't it, when, when, um, uh, and something has taught you the end to fit into uh, 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 you know, a page. Anyway, will we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so number nine uh, on our run list. It's from Chris Green. Um, Chris uh, asks, uh, how can you tell users that it's closed and moved? Um, Chris said, hi guys, Google my business question. Let's say you have a medical center and it is closed and merged with another center. How can you tell users that it's closed and moved? The only way I, I can think of is updating the Google my business description, saying it's moved and doing a Google my business post. <laughs> Oh, I was looking so, at one the other day. It, 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 it says uh, closed. So unfortunately, Chris, um, I'm just going to dash your entire plan. The minute your market is closed, it just puts that massive red permanently closed banner on, right? It then removes <laughs> uh, the posts and description. Now, um, it depends what category you're in and stuff like that. If the, it still stays, but then again, posts only stick around for 33 days now, I think. So you'll need to just double check it and test that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you're going to have to double check and test it. And depending on the category you're in, I'm not sure. I mean, I've never tested one in a medical center, so I'm not 100% sure. But depending on that, it's going to be a yes or no. And like, unfortunately, that's about it. Um, yeah. Uh, what I would do, though, is this is a thing, you know, I've, I've had a few permanently closed things over the years. You still get, uh, I was going to swear there, Jim. I can't do that. You've told me off. <laughs> you still get people like mm -hmm. ordinarily, if I see permanently closed, I don't click on stuff. But like, we all know how stupid users are. 
So your phone, make sure that's diverted or swap it out for the actual phone. Um, before you, you know, mark as permanently closed, I would switch out your URL. Um, and you can either do it mm -hmm. onto your, to the new site with the actual thing for the location going, um, hi, this is, you know, have a landing page for it. Hi, you know, this is, um, XYZ Medical Center, we've now been incorporated into this medical center. Um, we're, we're better, we're stronger, we're da 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 and make your appointment or whatever. So uh, before you do that, I would just make sure you handle your telephone number and your um, web address. Because when you mark it permanently closed and then it figures it out, it's not so easy sometimes to mark it as open again and switch that info out. And then because it's marked as permanently closed and then you permanently close it again, sometimes it reverts to the old info. So it's a bit of a pain in the brain. So just get your, click, your clicks and your phone numbers in the right place. If posts stay on there in for medical centers, that's brilliant but they're only there for 33 days. Description, I'm not sure if that still stays, but from the one that I've marked as permanently closed, a lot of them that don't hang about, but test it, see it may work for you. Thank you, Tim. Anything to add, Massa? No, let's move on to, I think it's, it, it, yes, it is. Thank you for watching time. All right. So, look, I can't go without thanking uh, Masataki Wasa um, and uh, Tim Kappa um, for um, making this um, clip. And uh, I must also thank people like uh, M Michael Martinez, uh, um, Brendan Malone, uh, Michael Stricker, Richard Hearn, pe pe people who uh, answer questions uh, uh, immediately throughout the week um, and make it um, uh, such a, a, a valuable uh, contribution to uh, what we do. All right, um, we'll be back at the same time uh, next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, we we'll look forward to seeing you then. Um, okay.